Move. Move. What if the world you once knew that was so full of life and humanity turned into a dystopian post-apocalyptic world where zombie-like creatures roam the earth and the only one that you can trust is yourself? For today's video, I want to talk about how the Last of Us series is a complex story about morality and humanity, a gray area where one is not in the wrong nor right as people will do anything to survive in this unforgiving and unfair world. It covers sensitive topics about familial, gender and queer relationships and representation, feminism, sexual abuse, and justice in a world that divides the people based on their own beliefs and views. It features a diverse cast of characters from different cultural backgrounds, as each survivor's story and experience in the apocalyptic world are unique and significantly affects Joel and Ellie's journey in this broken world. The Last of Us is a game made by Naughty Dog Studios for the PlayStation 3 in 2013 and we released its remake and sequel for the PS4 and PS5. Due to the massive success of the video game, it sprouted a live-action remake in 2023 and retold the story of our protagonist in a refreshing yet grounded take on the video game in a live-action format and that's what we are discussing for today. So if you haven't watched the series or played the game, be wary of spoilers and if you have the time, go play and watch it. It's one of a kind experience for sure. The series follow Joel Miller, a broken and hardened man due to the loss of his daughter Sarah when the apocalypse began. 20 years later, he is tasked with tests by Marlene, a leader of the Fireflies, to smuggle a young girl named Ellie who is immune to the infection. To the Fireflies, a resistance movement, in hopes of finding a cure. In the span of 9 episodes, the series followed the struggles of Joel and Ellie as they faced infected individuals, befriend new allies, and witness the dangers that the world has become. In the first few episodes, Joel dismisses Ellie, referring her only as cargo, but as they journey across the country, he opens up more to her, referring to her as baby girl. It's okay, baby girl. And Ellie finds a dad-like figure in Joel that can teach her how to survive in this world. They travel across the country, eventually finding Joel's brother, Tommy, in a settlement that shows a peek to what the world could be like. This sparks hope for the two as they carry on on their travels and eventually end up to their destination. Without a choice, Ellie is prepped for surgery by Marlene as her life could be the reason to create a vaccine, but this will kill her in the process. Why is she in surgery? It produces a kind of chemical messenger. It makes normal cordyceps think that she's cordyceps. It's why she's immune. He thinks it could be a cure, Joel. A cure. Joel didn't come this far to let Ellie go that early. They traveled far and wide, risked their lives for each other, and experienced life together. That Joel finally has a second chance to have a daughter, and he's not going to lose this chance once again. Angered by this, Joel goes on a rampage, killing every soldier and Marlene in the process before escaping into the hospital. After rescuing Ellie, Joel lies to her that the Fireflies stopped making a cure and saved her from them. They return to Tommy's settlement, but Ellie knows that Joel's lying about why he rescued her. With that, Joel swore that everything in the end he said was true, in which Ellie replies with, Okay. Okay. The show generally follows the same format of the video game. We follow Joel and Ellie as they cross the country in hopes of finding a cure to the post-apocalyptic world full of infected individuals, militia, and survivors. It spices things up by adding new scenes that highlight the protagonist's interaction and focusing more on human relationships of the main characters rather than the gunfighting and zombie-like action similar to the game. While we see the story in Joel's perspective, it is not only about him but as Ellie as well. It is a story of Ellie figuring out her purpose to be a cure in this broken world while Joel sees this as an opportunity to take what the world took from him. The show is not afraid to break gender and race stereotypes as seen in characters like Tess and Marlene portraying a strong and independent woman who is capable of what a man can do. Tess is shown to be as close and loving to Joel who sees him as a partner, yet she is tough and not afraid to speak her mind when it comes to survival. Marlene, on the other hand, is the leader of the Fireflies, a resistance movement hoping to gain freedom from the military. And she will do anything that it takes to make her goal come true. 
She acted as Ellie's mother figure until she met Joel. In episodes 4 and 5, we see Kathleen, a leader of a revolutionary movement in Kansas City, who is sweet-spoken yet a fierce leader when it comes to justice for her people. In episode 6, we see Maria, the wife of Joel's brother, Tommy, who is a council member of the settlement and also gives advice to Ellie and gives her an instruction on how to use a menstrual cup. People, I know about that. Being able to see women not bound by their gender is a refreshing take on modern feminism in shows which often takes the backseat in story-driven media. How they talk and act mirror the real world that women can be leaders in society and how they are molded this way due to the harsh world that they are living in. Female characters in media are also judged upon the audience when they see flaws or unrealistic portrayals of women. Fans of the game who watched the show praised Tess for her acting while some were skeptical as she didn't look like her counterpart from the game. Same with Maria who had a race change in the show as compared to her appearance in the game. The thing is that the show further explains and expands the lore of The Last of Us through its setting and characters. Take a look at Bill. Where in the game, he is subtly contextualized as a gay man, but in the show, it explains his life as he meets Frank, who becomes his partner as they try to survive in this post-apocalyptic world. The concept of masculinity, that a man should be tough and not show emotions, is shattered in episode 3 as Bill was finally able to express himself as a gay man, thanks to Frank who reciprocates the feeling. Let alone that they seem to be in their 40s and queer representation of older men are little in media. It shows that men can be as nurturing and loving as women, even in the world where infected from the streets. They eventually decide to pass away together, but it does leave a bittersweet taste in my mouth as it associates itself with the bury your gaze trope found in various media where LGBTQIA characters are most likely to die than heterosexual characters. However, their story is wrapped up perfectly about how two people found love in the apocalypse and that is all that matters. This also corresponds later in episode 7 that Ellie has feelings for her friend Riley. From having a men love men relationship shown, we now have women love women relationships that give queer people representation that they yearn for in media. Although short-lived as Riley becomes infected, it showcases the genuine love Ellie feels for her friend, especially in their teenage years where they don't give a damn about the world around them. Ellie's sexuality also carries over in the sequel of the game and is a significant addition to the franchise. This however sparked a division with the audience as they felt that this inclusion feels forced and that audiences say that this is queer propaganda and should not be included in the media. Talking about sensitive topics, the game and show feature people getting killed by the infected or people killing their own kind. We see this gender-based violence throughout the show such as Tess getting tortured in episode 1 by men and frees herself by talking about her situation. Joel nearly killing and occasionally torturing people who cross their way and most especially in episode 8. The series gets darker as it explores cannibalism and how David's predatory characteristic against Ellie is a hard pill to swallow. David offers his community people as food and unfortunately eyes on Ellie to be his new pet. Ellie clearly knows his intentions that he is showing her love and is disgusted by his actions. Cornering Ellie, David almost sexually abuses and harasses her but she brutally kills him with a meat cleaver and ends up traumatized by the series of events that had happened. There's no fear in love. <laughs> It's an invasion of privacy and rights, and this scene is painful to watch when it reflects the real-world scenarios of men taking advantage of women and vice versa. Overall, The Last of Us score theme is about finding hope in a desolate world and rekindling that love Joel had for his daughter Sarah through Ellie. The show emphasizes the key points of their journey of Joel and Ellie and how they found comfort in each other. It gave audiences a new perspective of the characters we meet in the game and fleshed out its story in live-action format. It gained critical reviews for being able to adapt a video game 
to a series by sticking to the source material. However, some found the changes of scenarios, places, and characters questionable and felt that the queer representation of the characters were unnecessary to move the story forward. Despite this, I like the show's take on the game, having played it countless of times in the past years. It is a new and fresh retelling that emphasizes the complexity of human relationships, the gray morality of what is right and wrong, and the inclusion and representation of various and unique characters is a step forward that breaks down gender norms and stereotypes, as well as representing the LGBTQIA plus in media. What would you do when the world took everything from you? Would you succumb to the infection or adapt to be one of the survivors in this post-apocalyptic world? If we don't endure and survive, it will surely be the last of us.